A beginner diabetic mistake. Are you doing these? We are all susceptible to making mistakes. When you are first diagnosed with diabetes, there is a lot to learn. And it is inevitable that you will make some mistakes along the way. That's okay. Hey, right? We do all make mistakes. Here are three most common mistakes. And I'll give you some advice on that to avoid them, okay? I'm Dr. Ergen. I'm an endocrinologist. I'm a diabetes specialist. I see diabetes patients day in, day out, even in my dreams. It's my life. So, I hope you can take my advice. So, let's start. So, I would say let's avoid these typical mistakes in the diabetes management. Number one, insufficient use of testing. Now, of course, you're going to be like, what? You want me to prick my finger? No way. Well, not so fast. Well, let's think about this. It is really imperative that you choose a treatment plan that is effective for you. Well, how do you do that? When you are first learning how your body reacts to different foods and activities, it's important to monitor your blood sugar levels often. Now, somebody may say, I eat fruits, my blood sugars are perfect. Somebody may say, I look at the fruits and my blood sugar spikes. Hmm. Well, because not everybody is different. Not everybody is at the same level of diabetes. So, but if you keep track of what you eat and how much activity you get and how your blood sugar levels react to that, you will be able to identify highs and lows and determine what caused them, right? And you can discuss with your doctor, see what kind of action plan you can come up with. So... Any adjustment you make in your diabetes regimen. Now, a lot of people will say to us, they go to sugarmds.com, they buy all the supplements, and next thing you know, in a month or two, their blood sugars are all down, their blood sugars are sometimes even too low, and they call us and say, what do I do with my medications? Well, guess what? I am not your doctor. I'm not your private doctor, so I cannot advise you without knowing you just over the phone. We don't do that. We can't do that. So please, ask your doctor. Say, hey, doc, you know, look, my blood sugars are going low. You put me on insulin. You put me on all this bunch of medications. Can we please cut back on this, please? Thank you. You know, that, that will be great. But like I said, we don't give advice on medications. Our supplements work great when you take them for a while. But like I said, if you want to drop the medications, that's between you and your doctor. So more importantly, make use of the CGM devices. What is a CGM? It's a continuous glucose monitoring device like Libre or Dexcom. They will tell you a lot about your blood sugar levels in the blood. Also, it is a fantastic method for determining how well the sugar MD products like Glucodefense or our Super Berberine are working for you. For example, start taking them and continue to evaluate your progress for approximately two months. The benefits will become apparent to you around maybe two months maximum okay it's not going to happen in two days some of the products sometimes does that but like i said a rule of thumb is two months give it two months three months is even better to check your a1c again etc but like i said these are not medication replacements these are supplemental foods sub food supplements that help you greatly now being unwell has an effect on your blood sugars as well right if you're sick if you catch a cold if you have a uti if you have an infection somewhere uh, one infection, God knows, right? You also sometimes are given prednisone, like some things that can drive your appetite. Then next thing you know, my blood sugars are so high, you know, nothing I do works. Then you get depressed about it. Well, if you have a sickness like flu or something like that, then you really need to check your blood sugar even more often, even every four hours, even if when you're not eating, because your blood sugar can continue to go up without eating when you're sick. Think about this. Even if you're not on steroids, your body will pump, will make steroids to get over the infection. So it's not any different than taking steroids when you are sick. So you have to monitor more often and make sure you're still taking your supplements, your medications as much as you can unless you're vomiting. Uh, if your blood sugars are extremely high, test your ketones, get a ketone kit. If your ketones are high, then you may want to actually go to the hospital and see what's going on. Are you in diabetic ketoacidosis? Are you going into coma, right? So you don't want to take chances in that. So don't wait, take attention, preferably in the ER. Like I said, 
Elevated ketones, especially when you're sick, nausea, vomiting, abnormal pain, are the signs of diabetic ketoacidosis, and that's a true medical emergency that requires immediate treatment. What's the second mistake? Well, I'll tell you, and you'll hate me for this, but not moving around sufficiently. Now, people who have diabetes who engage in physical activity reap significant benefits from it, including improved blood pressure, not just blood sugar. As you know, a lot of diabetics also have a blood pressure problem. Your weight will respond to that. Your energy level will respond to that. Also, your risk of cardiovascular disease will go down. Your nerve damage will go down. For example, recently I made a video about, you know, the great exercises to help get rid of neuropathy, nerve damage. Guess what? Nobody watched it. Why not? When I say exercise, nobody wants to do it. But really, there are simple things you can implement. You will see great, amazing results. You will even see your LDL going down. Your triglycerides are going down. Your good cholesterol going up. Your HDL going up. Uh, you don't have to like be a gym rat or a marathon runner or anything like that. You just need to set a goal that is reasonable and specific. It's a very good strategy, such as say, okay, you know what? I'm going to take a walk for 15 minutes after every supper, dinner, whatever you call it. That's it, right? Start from somewhere. Now, you can't take walks? Do sitting exercise. I have videos on this, folks. Come on, watch them. They're like treasure, hidden treasures. Look, we... Before YouTube, before my channels, people used to sell these packages for like uh, hundreds and hundreds of dollars uh, to people to say, I'm going to train you and educate you. Can I do that? Yes, but I'm giving it to you free. Just because it's free it doesn't mean it's not valuable. So watch them. Pass them to other people. But I'll tell you, whatever the activity you do, at least half an hour almost every day. Make it a habit. Make it a religious ritual for yourself to be active for at least 30 minutes. Now, if you're going to go to something hardcore, you better maybe talk to your doctor about if you have heart disease, etc. Make sure you are cleared about what you are going to do and never ever start an extreme exercise if you are deconditioned. If you really want to see or if you want to, you know, get motivated, again, checking your blood sugar before and after your physical activity will help you. Now, sometimes some people's blood sugar will spike during the exercise, and that's okay because your your body is pumping, the adrenaline is pumping, cortisol, a lot of things, your body's in a stress, short-term stress, which is good for you. Long-term stress is not good for you, right? So short-term stress may spike your blood sugar, but guess what? In the next five to six hours, up to 24 hours, your blood sugars will mellow out and will be good. And if you're on insulin or salfonylurea like glimopride, your blood sugar may actually drop. So you have to wash that out as well, or maybe take a little bit less insulin on those days that you're working out, which should be every day. But well, it's a great way of also reducing the insulin amount, right? So, but checking the blood sugar before and maybe a few hours later is a great motivator for you. And at the end of the day, your A1C will change because what is A1C at the end of the day? A1C is an average blood sugar, period, in the last three months. So make it a routine, get it going. Let's say some people say, Doc, I can't move it. I still don't have no energy. Well, a lot of people take sugar MD diavitamin if you find that you're lacking that energy to get up and go. So start taking diavitamin every day, which is available on our website and will be a great assistance for you. Number three, the third mistake, right? Not paying attention to your feet. Now that breaks my heart. Why? Because a lot of times people come to me as a first patient and their complaint is an ulcer on their foot. I'm like, how long have you been diabetic? They're like, uh, 30 years. I'm like, okay, where were you? What were you doing? Of course, I don't say like that, you know, you have to be nice, right? But really, where were you? Like your blood sugars have been running high for decades and now you have a hole at the bottom of your feet. Did nobody tell you that you got to check, you know, your feet? You know, people sometimes say a oh, doctor will check me in six months. No, check it every day yourself, at least a couple of times a week, because I may see you today. Next thing you may develop an ulcer. That's not the case. Okay, so you have to check your feet every day. So if you have numbness or tingling and discomfort, that's even more important. And sometimes you may not even have any feeling. Sometimes you may not even have a clue that you have good neuropathy. You may have nothing wrong. You may still have neuropathy. So if you have diabetes, consider yourself that you have neuropathy, period. It's better to be safe than sorry. So that's a huge mistake that people end up losing their extremities or having significant disability 
because of neuropathy, because of long, not having symptoms for a long time and then suddenly hitting them. Even with the symptoms, you know, it may be very simple to overlook them at first. So as time goes on, it will get severe, it's going to get worse and worse. So examining your feet on a daily basis will help you avoid developing these painful foot problems. If you have a swelling, if you have a wound, if you have a blister, make sure you take care of it right away. Don't sleep on it. You need to use moisturizers on your feet. Keep your toenails trimmed in good shape. Don't put the moisturizers in between your toenails. That's the only area we don't want wet because otherwise you're going to get fungus. But those are important things when it comes to your feet. Now, you can accomplish the moving your goals by moving your toes and ankles two to three times a day, wiggling your toes, etc. Uh, those type of exercises will also help you accomplish to get the nerves, get the uh, vasculature pumping again. Again, I have a neuropathy video that I think you should watch it. Just type sugar MD neuropathy exercises. You should watch that uh, video. Another thing, try avoid sitting for extended periods of time, especially with your legs crossed. I know a lot of people do that. And that's another thing that just makes neuropathy worse. And then finally, which is a bonus for you, Again, I know you already do it, most of you, but use sugar MD neuropathy support. You can use it together with benfotiamine, alpha lipoic acid, then, and then you do everything else I just said, you're, the, you're good. Then you don't have to worry nothing about the neuropathy, no problems, and these mistakes, if you can avoid these mistakes, um, then you'll be good. Studies have shown that this benfotiamine, alpha lipoic acid, they help reduce the risk of problems, not just diabetic neuropathy, but the kidney problems, eye problems, a lot of like small vessel problems that happens due to diabetes tend to be less likely with benfotiamine, alpha lipoic acid, and B12 kind of vitamins. And neuropathy support has it all in together, but sometimes adding an extra benfotiamine and alpha lipoic acid will give you an extra shield. But thanks for watching. I really appreciate that, and I'll see you in the next video. Hey guys, I hope you're enjoying this channel so far and I hope you subscribed already. If you didn't, do it. And if you did, watch this video right there. I think that will help you too.